Hello and welcome to the Saint Chapelle in Paris and to this edition of Health. An orchestra is about to fill these hallowed halls with melodies to lift people's spirits. Get ready for some good vibrations as this week we're looking at the power music can play on our minds, our bodies and our general well-being. Coming up in this week's show, you'll see how with the help of a violinist's bow, surgeons are able to pinpoint the parts of the brain that are malfunctioning. Reducing stress, lowering blood pressure and even helping Alzheimer's patients to remember, we'll be showing you how music is not just the food of love, but of life itself. However, like all good things, a little goes a long way and doctors warn against the effects of binge listening. Well, while these musicians uh, fine-tune their instruments, we're going to meet with doctors uh, fine-tuning the brain of a violinist. The patient remains awake and continues to play throughout the operation, allowing surgeons to pinpoint the exact parts of his brain that are malfunctioning. Violinist Roger Frisch is playing a tune under unusual circumstances. He's having brain surgery at the same time. Doctors here are trying to cure him of a condition known as essential tremor that causes uncontrollable movements of the body. It really scared the daylights out of me. Millions of people suffer from the same condition. But for the Minnesota-based concertmaster, it was like a death knell. I was playing all these solos and I could no longer draw a straight bow like that. It was, it was more like that. It was either the end of my career or drill holes in the head. He opted for the latter. Essential tremor is caused by a part of the brain sending out the wrong signals to muscles. To fix it, doctors need to apply electrical signals to areas of the brain causing problems by inserting electrodes, a procedure known as deep brain stimulation. Just touching the brain at the right location oftentimes improves the tremor dramatically. Play a note for us now. Roger is kept awake during surgery. By playing the violin, his brain emits signals that could help doctors pinpoint the affected part of the brain. Roger, what do you think? Much better. You think it's much better? Mm-hmm. That's excellent. It was, it was truly remarkable, enough that the entire room just broke out in, in applause. Deep brain stimulation is also used in treatment of Parkinson's disease. And it worked for Roger's brain problem. The artist was back on stage just one month after surgery. Well, it's not just in the operating theatre that music can help mend. Listening or playing it can lower our blood pressure, help our heart, or even change our mood, as Paris jazzman Laurent de Wilde knows all too well. Hi, Laurent. Thanks so much for welcoming us into your studio. Now, I know this piece you're playing helps you to relax, but in fact, it's not just all about feelings. There is actually some scientific part of the way music can help our health. You've recently discovered protein music. Tell me, what is that? Well, it's a discovery by Joel Sternheimer. Uh, to make a long story short, he managed to measure the frequencies proper to each amino acid that compose a protein. So what it is, is actually a melody proper to each protein. So when you actually play that melody, it responds, a living organism, uh, that can vibrate and react and grow bigger, stronger. Well, protein music then could be coming to a hospital near you, but music therapy is already being used. Indeed, music, it would appear, is a mega vitamin for both our brains and our bodies. Music doesn't just stir the soul. Researchers say it's good for the heart and mind too. It can reduce the risk of a heart attack and fight off diseases like Alzheimer's. A faster tempo increases breathing, heart rate and blood pressure. Slower paced music does the reverse. Researchers found tracks alternating between fast and slow are best for blood circulation and the heart. Verdi's arias noted as fitting the heart's natural rhythm best. It's also thought that musical memories are more resilient to degenerative conditions such as Alzheimer's and dementia. Hearing a familiar song can help trigger memories. La musicothérapie. Music therapy allows access to some areas of the brain that are affected by Alzheimer's. 
Drugs have to be used in conjunction with music as therapy, and we have proof it works. Music therapy had a powerful effect on this woman's husband. It was extraordinary. He didn't speak much, but after his music therapy session, he always wanted to talk about nice memories. Studies have shown that using music can help reduce anxiety, balance moods and treat depression. Here in France, more and more health professionals are training to practice this therapy, though there is still no official medical diploma for it. Music then can be therapeutic. Indeed, as you can see, many people unwinding here to some DJ mixing. But doctors also warn against binge listening. In just one night out, your ears can be forced to absorb as much as three weeks' worth of noise. Hello! Binge drinking. Binge eating. But binge listening? It's not a term commonly heard, but that's what some Australian researchers are calling it when young people go out and are exposed to high sound levels. We found that their noise most days was really low, really very safe, and then they'd have a big night out. And on that big night out, they'd get maybe three weeks' worth of noise exposure in one night. It's like a binge, so we call that binge listening. A survey of Australians aged between 18 and 35 found that almost half were regularly exposed to damaging noise levels, from nightclubs, gigs, parties and playing MP3 players too loud. When you go out and you have a big hit of noise on one night, two things happen. You get a, a temporary hearing loss, but that goes away and you think, fine, no problems. But then what you don't realise is there's a small amount of permanent hearing loss occurring at the same time. But a lot of young people just don't realise that they might be damaging their hearing. In the US, a recent study concluded that one in every five teenagers had hearing loss equivalent to that in a 50-year-old. So, what can be done to prevent permanent hearing loss occurring? Having a break from the noise at clubs and gigs, wearing earplugs or noise-cancelling headphones are just some suggestions. Researchers hope young people will listen to the warnings while they still can. And finally, before we leave you, sticking with tunes, here's something strange but true. Music, or Mozart at least, could help premature babies get stronger. That's according to doctors in Israel who tested the theory on 20 premature infants. They noticed that babies who heard the classical melodies were calmer, their heart rate dropped a bit and their oxygen intake was quicker. The overall results were that the infants didn't need as many calories to grow and so put on weight all that bit faster. The sample size was small and doctors are now looking at whether or not it was Mozart or just music that had the effect. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's show. A big thanks to everyone who worked on it, notably the man at the other side of this camera, Raba Zanoun. Thanks also to René Kaplan and Young Jim. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again next time.